is the most persistent. Give me your history with Encores. This is my eighth show with Encores, and it starts. I uh, started back in '98, uh, strike up the band, and I've done wonderful shows. And this is just another one in a long line of great, beautiful American musical comedies. And I'm really proud of uh, this particular show because uh, a lot of people don't know the show as well as they know the film. And you'll learn that by coming to Encores and seeing it that there's some wonderful music that was left out of the movie that is so great to hear and great to see perform. Well, let's talk about this musical. This is from the heyday, the golden day of musical theater. I think Kiss Me Kate was the same year. Same year. Kiss Me Kate 1949. It was a great year. Kiss Me Kate, A Gentleman Prefer Blondes. Phenomenal, phenomenal year. And this is really a classic, wonderful American musical theater. It, 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 it just starts that way and doesn't stop in that way. And it comes out of the, the tradition, the, the vaudeville tradition, um, and you feel it when you watch it. Uh, it. It has a sense of that. So directing here before, does it make it easier? Are the challenges the same every time you come back to direct a musical here with the short amount of time you have? Yeah. It's always a challenge here, but the great thing about it is it's staffed with such wonderful people. The, the, first off, the cast that I have is spectacular, and it's very easy to attract wonderful people to do, do an encore because it's such a great place to work and it's such a brief amount of time to do the work. Um, and then the orchestra, which is exceptional, and of course that's what's really featured at an encore is the, the concert sound. and um, So that part of it is really special. It makes the job very, very happy job because of, because of that. Um, on top of that, with Rob Berman conducting, and then I'm collaborating again. This is my third collaboration here at Encores with Randy Skinner, um, the choreographer, who does an amazing job with the show. And um, so that part of it makes it another, also a very special kind of relationship to have here. Talk a little bit about your cast. My cast is, I'm really blessed. I have these great women, first off, in Megan Hilty and Rachel York. It's a fantastic combination. I'm very proud of that. Um, and they are loving their jobs, which is always really, really helpful. And then they're supported by a wonderful group of men all around them. Aaron Lazar, Clark Thorell. It's great people. Uh, Stephen Buntrock. And it's just a fantastic group. And then some of the charming uh, character people like... Uh, uh, Simon, Simon Gre Jones and um, uh, Deb Rush, the, really good people. Um, so, Let's talk about the Encores audience. You've directed a lot of the shows here. Talk about the loyal audience here and what they take away from an Encores show and what they can expect. Yeah, the, the audience here at Encores is such a special audience because they, they're so versed in musical theater, first of all. And then they, they're versed in, in Encores because they're dutiful followers of the, of the, of the project, which is to really... Uh, bring back to life musicals that have been sort of left aside and forgotten. And I, strangely, Gentleman Prefers Blondes, as big a title as it is, and as glorious a film that it was, it really doesn't have a big life in the musical theater. And we hope that this, uh, this concert will reinvigorate interest in, in this particular piece. How did this come about for you? How did it come about? Um... Gosh, I auditioned, like everybody else. <laughs> you're all stars. Everybody said, yeah, I auditioned, I auditioned. I was like, they should just offer all of you these roles. Well, I auditioned, and I had a great time. Um, uh, they wanted to make sure that, that, that Megan was cool with it, and she was, and she's great. I love working with her. She's cool and so talented and beautiful. Um, and, in fact, the entire cast is perfectly cast in all of their roles and uh, a delight to work with. Everyone's saying the same thing. They're yeah. saying, I'm obsessed with this cast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you all came together so fast with this. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, it's John, it has to do with John Rando and Randy Skinner. Um, they are they're a brilliant creative team, I, and they're so fun to work with. And I'm really grateful to Randy because um, 
I used to dance a lot, and I'm dancing in the show, and he makes me look like I'm really good. <laughs> you are really good. I love what I'm doing. So many great numbers in this show. Do you have a favorite so far that you do? Well, I, I, I love that song. I love what I'm doing because I'd never heard it before. It wasn't in the movie, and so it was sort of a surprise. And of course, I get to like fondle all the gymnasts in the show and be like, oh yeah, I love your muscles. So I like that. <laughs> together on a, a, a musical that was potentially going to come to Broadway called Me and Miss Monroe. And I played Marilyn Monroe in the, in the show um, at a time shortly before her death. Uh, and we had a great time working together. And I'm so glad that we get to do it again. And dancing with Randy Skinner, or for Randy Skinner, what that's been like so far. Excellent. I I was like a little bit nervous, you know, getting back into the dance shoes and everything after having a baby, and uh, and he made it really easy for me. <laughs> well, let's just talk about this musical and the role of Dorothy Shaw, classic musical theater character, and this is a musical that's thrown back to the heyday of the golden age. Talk about that. Oh. <laughs> There's, there's nothing like these old time musicals. It's what I used to watch when I was a kid. They just make you happy. Um, in fact, the, the whole premise of the story is two showgirls who uh, go on a cruise in the 1920s where now they're allowed to drink. So, um, you know, Lorelei, uh, Megan's character, plays um, the practical gold digger. And I'm the party girl who doesn't want a rich man because I don't want to be trapped. I just want to have fun with the boys. So, uh, that's what it's about. It's about drinking and having fun, basically. <laughs> with great songs and dancing. With great songs and great dancing, exactly. And talk about being here at Encores, what this whole experience has been like so far. Well, so far it's been fantastic. Um, I've enjoyed working with, with everybody involved. Um, it's, it's been wonderful. It's a quick process, though. Did you know going in what it was going to be like? Yeah. Of, co of course I knew. Uh, but luckily, we are allowed to carry our scripts, so it was, it's fine. And I've done summer stock uh, before, so I, I was telling them that I had to learn Dolly Levi in 10 days. So, um, so it's, it's OK. I can do it. I can handle it. <laughs> Megan said this is like Broadway summer stock at its very best. Right, exactly, exactly. And, but without the pressure, I mean, we do have our scripts there, although we're probably going to be mostly off book. It's nice to have it there, just in case. Tell me about how this all came about for you with Gentlemen. Uh, well, uh, Jay Binder gave me a call and said, you want to come in? And I said, great, I'll come in and audition. And they made me Josephus Gage, the Zipper King. And uh, he's a very boisterous fellow and a lover of vegetables and all things that are healthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is my first encores. And boy, do you jump in and you are running right from the get-go. And uh, trying to hang on for dear life is what I'm doing right now. Well, you've obviously seen some encores, have you? I've never seen an encore. No, I've never seen an encore. Yeah, I, I, no, I take that back. I did see my wife when she did the gala, the big gala, a couple of years ago, and that was what I saw, just a little snippets of what the encore experience is all about. So, 
So have you asked people who've done it advice of how it's all done and what to expect? I literally tell everybody, just tell me where to go, where to stand, and what to do, and uh, they pretty much do it. <laughs> I, you know what it is? It, everybody loves talking about doing an encore. I feel like I have a badge of honor on me right now. It's, it's uh, Everybody loves being a part of this, the, the series, and I can't believe it's been going on for 19 years. I have no idea. Um, and, you know, I'm just glad that now I can actually go back and say I have actually done an encore. Well, not yet. We still have a couple more, <laughs> another week before we open. <clears throat> so what has this week been like? Talk about what you love about this musical, the time period, the music. Well, the music, first of all, first and foremost, uh, you know, they don't make musicals like this. Uh, and I didn't even realize this is the same year when this came out. This is the same year Kiss Me Kate was, uh, I mean, it's amazing. It blows your mind. It was so, it's so much great material all at once on Broadway. Um, this music, I could literally take a bath in. Um, it is just glorious. It lifts you along in just such a lovely manner. Uh, the lyrics are so uh, uh, lovely and romantic and, and of course then you have my song which is a you know a boisterous number and then I try not to scream all the way through it um, and uh, just the show itself I, I think Megan is doing an incredible job she's just perfect Rachel's doing a great job my friend Aaron Lazar is doing a fantastic job and I think anybody that comes and sees this is gonna be blown away by the actual music and the voices and when you add that 31 piece orchestra I mean come on seriously this doesn't get any better than this how did Gentlemen come about for you? Oh my gosh. Well, I, it had been a while since I had even gone in for any of the Encores uh, uh, shows. And so I, I flagged it to the attention of my, my agents and managers and, and um, did get called in for, for this role, for this production. I thought it was one of the worst auditions I had had in a long time. I walked out and I called my manager and I said, I may as well have you know, pooped. <laughs> really? <laughs> and he said, well, you walked out of the room with the role. And so it was, and I think Aaron had a similar story. Aaron Lazar had a similar story that he didn't think he did well at all. And you just never know. So you might as well not worry about it is the lesson learned, I guess. But um, I'm so glad you're in the show. So talk, talk about the role. Uh, I play Gus Esmond, the button king, or well, I'm not quite yet the button king, but the heir to the button empire that my father has set up. And um, my father doesn't want me to marry Lorelei. Uh, but I do, and she wants to marry me, and we're supposed to f uh, sail to Paris to become married. And um, turns out I have to stay back. And so I send them on, send her on her way with the party girl, <laughs> Dorothy, and uh, all sorts of things happen with miscommunication and missing ca ca cablegrams and and uh, hijinks. And then, but it all comes around in celebration of love and. Old-fashioned musicals, nothing like them. Tell me what you love about these musicals. I mean, this is 1949. I mean, it's Kiss Me Kate was the same year. I mean, yeah. Cole Porter, this was Julie Stein. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly, truly the best kind of, uh, the feeling of the celebration of what the best of musical theater can be. Um, these incredible songs, just ridiculous, uh, fun book and scenes. And, and again, it's almost kind of farcical in a way. Um, and it takes place in the Roaring Twenties, so so it's just you've got those elements to it, flappers and showgirls and big Olympian athlete, athletic man, and you know it's it's just when you put that together with this type of team and the with John Rando and Randy Skinner and the expertise of the the team that you have here at Encores, it's just, it's it's so much fun. And then you're cramming it into 10 days of work and, and, and then, you know, throwing it up on its feet with big production values. It's, it's just the best. It, there's nothing like it. And it's so much fun to do. The girls called it Broadway summer stock. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. And in the best possible way and best possible, possible circumstances. Does it make it easier that you've already done one? Because give me your history with Encores. Um, I came in and did uh, Juno, which is the Juno and the Peacock-based um, musical. and. Um, very dark material, so very different, um, totally different experience. But you know, you still just have the same number of days and, and you know limitations on you. And I think it just cranks up the adrenaline, and everybody knows that they have to be firing on all cylinders. So uh, you know, uh, it's totally different experience, but um, having such a blast. And thank God for uh, for this opportunity and for you know for what they do, what what this celebrates and that it gets to go and dig into the archives and find gems like this and kind of re-celebrate them. And how did this all come about for you, Aaron? Audition. And one of the fastest turnarounds, too. It was like, you know, went in, felt like it went okay, got a call like, you know, half an hour later. You're the guy. I was like, okay, it's great. Um, 
And John Rando, always wanted to work with him. Actually, always wanted to work at Encores. I've never done an Encore show. So this is my uh, maiden voyage on the Encore ship. And it's so fun. Yeah. But you need to see them before. Have you come? Yeah, I've seen them, of course. Do you know how they run? Did you ask anybody who've done these before advice of how it's all done and what to expect? No, it's so, it's so legendary that you just sort of just, you know what you're getting into. And then everybody's, the, the great thing about it is there's no stress. Like, not yet, maybe. Give us like three or four days when we get closer, but it's, everyone's just having a good time. So well, Let's talk about the role and what you love about it, the music. Sure, so I play Henry Spofford the third. Uh, the the millionaire. Well, the son. He says he doesn't have much money because we don't know what mom's doing with it all. But De Deborah Rush plays um, uh, uh, Mrs. Spofford, my mom, and we're just this wealthy Philadelphia mother and son who are on this boat, and I end up uh, spending most of my time trying to stop her from drinking, and trying to get uh, Rachel's character Dorothy to fall in love with me and marry me. Uh, but he's he's kind of a, a stuffed shirt, kind of a, a, a nerdy kind of guy who. Um, is the conductor of the Glee Club, so uh, that adds some that adds some fun to the whole mix. You know, this is a musical from the golden age of musical theater. Just talk about this great score. Yeah, well, it's just as cliche as they say. You know, they don't make them like they used to. That's what this is, and it, that's been sort of one of the biggest surprises for me is to just go, oh, I don't know the show. I never saw any of the. Uh, I didn't see the movie. I hadn't read the script until this. So you know, sort of stepping into this to say, what is this whole thing? And be amongst this cast of hilarious people who are all so funny. Oh my God. So it's great because we all just are there supporting each other in this crazy fast, you know, get it up. And then John Rando is the captain of our ship and he's amazing. Talk about your two leading ladies. What else can you say? I've done, uh, I actually had never met Megan, uh, but I've always wanted to, and so I'm so, she's amazing. And uh, I had done some concerts with Rachel before, but I've never gotten to sort of play opposite her. So we're just having a great time. How did this come about for you? Well, uh, my manager called and said, they're doing Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. You want to do it? <laughs> so was that easy? Yeah. And I said, absolutely, because it's one of my favorite musicals. I'm, I've been obsessed with the music for a really long time. I, I used to do a show called Megan Hilty Sings the Blondes, and so I had a big medley of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes tunes. So I've sung all, all the numbers that other, other people do. <laughs> well, let's talk about this. Many people know the film. I knew the show, but the show's so different from the film, and there were such beautiful numbers. Talk about the score, and this is a throwback to a gorgeous musical from the heyday of the Golden Musicals. Talk about that. Yeah, it's, uh, this is a perfect example of uh, they really don't make them like they used to. Um, it's... It's a perfect musical. The score is genius, um, and uh, I don't, I don't know. There, it's it's just really well constructed, and a lot of my numbers have several encores, <laughs> which in reading it, it was like, oh, people are going to get really sick of this. But the lyrics are so fantastic that uh, you know you just want to hear more and more and more and more. Talk about your fellow cast members so far. I know you just started rehearsing. Um, well, I've never worked with any of these people before, and they're amazing. I'm, I've become slightly obsessed with my castmates and our director, John Rando. He's amazing, and we just have so much fun. We're, we're just laughing the whole time. Do you have a favorite number? I mean, there were so many great numbers in the show. Um, right now, I think Little Rock is one of my favorites that I get to do. Um, there's a number called Mamie is a Mimi that I'm not in, but I've been hearing a lot about, and we're going to see it today. Um, that, it, that should be pretty fantastic, too. Well, let's talk about encores in general, what it's like working here. I mean, is it being like shot out of a cannon? Yeah, and but really, it's it's an honor to be here because it's it's such a prestigious thing to do, you know, in the Broadway community. Um, it's like summer stock for Broadway almost. <laughs> um, but it's great. I you know I've spent the last year learning things really quickly, so it's not too <laughs> out of the realm of possibility for me. But uh, uh, but it's really fun and and it's really exciting to know that we're going to have an audience next week. Does it make it easier? I mean, Smash has been incredible. Like I said, you've learned stuff so fast on that. Does it make it easier have working on Smash to do something like this? I guess so. Yeah, because my brain's kind of um, ready to take things really quickly. Um, but in TV, we could, you know, start over and do it again. <laughs> For this, it's going to be in front of 2,000 people. So it's slightly different, but it helps. My final question is, 
so many Smash fans who have fallen in love with you in Smash are going to see you in a show for the very first time. It's going to be their first show. Yeah. It's going to change them forever. How does that make you feel? Oh, gosh, it's great. It's great. Uh, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited that Smash has made people excited to see musical theater, and, um, and especially the ones who aren't necessarily accustomed to it and don't normally go out to the theater. So hopefully we're going to bring some people in to see this. Just a little girl. Oh! <laughs>